late night on the Staten Island Express. We got a few more cars to knock out. This one is a 2011 Ford F250 Super Duty with the 6.2 liter. And customer complaint is, well, customer just brought it in to this shop to get the trailer brake module replaced and Keith was called in to program it. Keith shows up, tries to program it, it's a no-com. And, well, now we're back to the vehicle to diagnose it. <laughs> Let's read the messages on the instrument cluster here. They'll cycle through. We got a tire pressure sensor fault, a little wrench. Trailer brake module fault, okay. Hill descent control fault. Service advanced track. And then it goes back to tire pressure. Also notice, we have an airbag light on, the little yellow exclamation point, and the little skid symbol. So that's what where we're starting. The scanner that Keith wants me to try out is the Bosch ADS 625. And I just did the full scan. And so far, it actually looks pretty awesome in terms of the information that you get from like a health report so if we go to DTC's if we have a yellow exclamation point that means it tried to scan it but it couldn't so most likely this module is offline if it has a red exclamation point that means it scanned it and found some DTC's if it has a green check mark that means no DTC's are stored this is actually very handy especially when it comes to newer vehicles with a lot of modules and everything's interconnected so modules are going to store codes that kind of tell on other modules like hey I can't talk to this guy or you know there's communication faults maybe that's what we're up against in this thing likely so in each one for example, you can talk to the ABS, but we have problems in here and it says, okay, private communication network, missing message, lost communication with restraints control module, lost communication with trailer brake control module, no sub information. Uh, I don't know what happens if you click on details. My first time using this tool, by the way. And it gives you links over here. Whatever you're subscribed to, Quick link, boom, get information on that code. So let's jump back here. Uh, let's see, see what the PCM found. Lost communication between fuel pump control module and restraints control module. Okay, again, it's telling on the airbag. Instrument cluster, trailer brake, restraints, parking assist control module. Okay, airbag, it tried to scan it, it couldn't. Not worried about TPMS, that's the, uh, well, you can see what it is, but it's just a tire pressure sensor signal failure. Don't care. For now. <laughs> Parking aid module, not scanned. Accessory protocol interface. I'm not, honestly, I'm not, I don't even know what that module is. Um, and then, these may or may not be installed in the car like dual drive, uh, driver dual climate control seat. No, we don't have that. So this could mean that you just don't have that option, but some of these we do have, and they're not online. So next thing we do is get a wiring diagram for this network and get a marker and see what's on the tree and what potentially could be causing no comm with several modules. So if we go to the home screen, one convenient thing here is we have system wiring diagrams. Click on that. I actually don't know what it's gonna show. Is it gonna be built in diagrams for this vehicle? Perhaps. That would be super convenient. Okay. So let's just go to computer data lines. What's cooking? Hey Keith, we got it nice and warm in here. Oh yes it is. 
So I clicked on wiring diagrams. You did. And it pops up with the redrawn Mitchell diagrams, right? That's fine. Okay. Right. This is computer lines. Yeah. So we saw which modules are, aren't are talking okay. on the initial health report. So restraints, trailer brake, parking aid, those three guys. Steering column control module? That was not in the list. It wasn't on the list of the okay, ones so that we tried to talk to. So if we want to go back to the list, uh, what did you hear? You could exit. Hit exit yep. or X. Yep, you'll have to go back oh, in again and do it. Okay, but. system test. Oh, it, re it doesn't store the test? So, it depends on how you go in there. I, I find it a little bit faster to actually sit there and jump right in. So no, it doesn't store that report on there that you can just go right back in and access unless you use this to access those modules individually. When unfortunately, when you go into the wiring diagrams and go back out, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, start over again. I thought it was a separate app, and you just no, minimize it yet. and go into Something the wiring. Something else though, that we uh, that, that we you oh, know this oh. is why we do the beta testing for awesome. them and sit there and send in the information and say these are the things that happen. So. Okay, as a technician, it would be super handy if I, you know, keep this on the screen, minimize mm -hmm. it, go to my di diagrams. See, that's why they need to make you start doing yeah. okay. testing okay. too, right? I like it. These are all the <laughs> ideas that we need to give them, and I'll tell you, they're a great company because they actually do listen. And that, to me, that's important. Yeah, you know, very if they important. actually listen and they sit there and they follow through on these things, you know, they have a team of six people that I know of for sure that work on the ADS 625. So everything that goes in, okay. they sit there and they talk about it. They'll call you back. They'll actually contact you and say, they're well, actual why do you human need beings? That? Yeah, they're actual human beings. And they call <laughs> you back and they say, well, why do you need that? What is it that it actually does for you? And what, what, well, you know, what purpose does that serve? And how does that speed up things for you? Or sometimes they'll actually just tell you, it can't be done because of the manufacturer's software that's in the computer. Okay. And there well, are some things that are like that. At least like give GM, you a reason. Like GM separating things into different groups. They can't write a full data list because if they run the full data list, they have to access different blocks of the computer each and every single time. So your refresh rate would just be ridiculously slow and unusable. Hmm. So, so it's a GM thing. We, yeah. So sometimes we don't like the way it's set up, but there is no other way. There is no better way that they can do it. Okay. Makes sense. So, yep. You know, and I never would have known that because mm -hmm. you know other certain companies never, <laughs> would never, you know, even contact you back to let you know that. So, uh, huh. you know. hmm. so, so as, as a user, that makes you excited. It is right there. Yep. It says it did talk. Oh, okay, no okay, code. So it did talk with no codes. Okay, yeah, I must have missed it in there. Mm -hmm. I only just happened to know there because I'm kind of summing up here what you have on this data line already. Okay, we have TPMS. Not, you know, not worried about that. Nice that you could do this while it's scanning though, right? Isn't it? That, that is nice, yes. So all the modules that are online that have codes have the U codes that say lost communication with brake control module, restraints, and parking aid. I like Th that. Those three are common within, okay. you know, ABS is telling on the same, um, same modules there. Right. So my next step was to be pull up a wiring diagram of the network and see what you know how the trees laid out until I came along and asked you that question and then made you have to wait <laughs> yes <laughs> did you notice by the way when they do their automated system test that they actually sit there and they give you all the readiness and everything else well on the yeah. printout it's gorgeous uh, you know, for the customer because it also gives them you know some of the mode 6 results and things like that so they'll actually give you you know a printout that's something usable okay you know rather than just you know now here's the codes and that's that is it easy to print is it a pdf does it save yeah, it yeah you can print really easy you can actually okay. set it up there you can set it up to any one of the wireless printers it's mm -hmm. very very simple no, um, no separate program to do yeah know. on some scanners it gives you a beautiful health report but you want to print it out yep. send it somewhere and that's a pain in the ass like yes, why why would they do that yep. mm -hmm. yeah so that's uh, definitely part of the Part of the process, so it's still doing the OBD2 so still stuff. Doing it. You could actually just stop it right there, right? Because you'd want to go back out anyway. So, and look so at your wiring when it says diagrams. stop scan, can we continue the scan from that point later? No, or it restarts again. That, yeah, unless you stayed on this screen. If you go into wiring uh, diagrams, since you're you're going to an outside, you're actually using a completely different app at that point. You're actually using their web browser. Okay. It just happens to be that way. There's nothing you can do that you can you know skip back and forth so, easily. So in this case, I would almost rather get my laptop. To do that on a separate screen. You could do screen. that, yeah, if, if you needed to go back and forth, but we already know which modules that you're not talking to here, so I oh, think you're. Oh, okay, let, let's you try know. it. So this is wiring diagrams for this truck, mm -hmm. but is it only going to be the Mitchell redrawn ones? No yes, OEM? No OEM. Okay. And those but are stored on the tool. So you're actually going on the web. You're going uh, on, on the their web. site. You're on their website right now, but there's no additional charge. If, as long as you have a subscription with Bosch for okay. the tool, 
<coughs> that's included with it. Got Excuse it. Excuse me. Got it. Mm -hmm. Which I think is invaluable. You know what I mean? Because some people out there just you know they don't, they may be able to afford the subscription for the tool, but not this tool and all having a subscription or... to all that or Mitchell or whatever mm -hmm. it is. And to me, I think that that's just a bonus or let's say that they can convince the shop now to get all data mm -hmm. for the OEM diagrams mm -hmm. let the shop pay for that and if this is the techs the tech has two sources of technical information right. now they have the, the all data color diagrams these color diagrams the OE, the OE diagrams you know it's right. just you know another source of information and, and I have seen already where the Bosch diagram differs a little bit from what I've seen in the all data redrawn diagrams really I yeah, thought those so, were all the same they're not the same. Okay, even though they so look the same very similar. Do this, but they get they get the information from different places to put together. Okay, so not everything always comes out the same. All right, so here we go. So we got our can network, the brown and the pink. Oh, don't worry. Oh, you just show them. I'll listen. That's good. So okay, DLC. Satellite digital receiver. Yeah, let's just look for the ones that are offline here. Driver seat module, audio control, in dash, GPS, tire pressure monitor. Okay, here we go. Parking aid, steering column control module. This is the BCM, and there's two CAN networks here. MS is medium speed, HS high speed mm -hmm. and then go to the next page this is the next page so the next page oh, there you'll hit that hit the little arrow mm -hmm. they Zoom haven't done here they haven't done the all the like the, like all that it does yet where where they can display them all across yeah, the page it, it's very nice when it's on one document you just scroll yeah scroll through mm -hmm. okay so here we go high speed can instrument panel we can talk to that telematics trailer brake control module so that guy is off the tree we're missing missing him can't talk to him uh, what else we have transfer case ABS yep PCM glow plugs I guess that's for uh, for diesels mm -hmm. NOx sensor also diesels transmission okay restraint control module can't talk to restraint control module how does that tie into our trailer brake control module well, let's see. So what kind of network is this? Or what's the network configuration? Is, is this uh, a, a star network or what's the uh, the technical term this will, for? This will not be a star. It's, they're not all in one yeah, point. Yeah, this is just a hybrid. A hybrid, this is a hybrid okay. network, yeah. It's, it's all over the place, <laughs> unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Okay. Telematics module, crew chief, right end of dash. So, question is, do we have telematics module? Usually, that'll be your navigation and your satellite radio. Okay, so no. And this one connects at C2108. So, that's just the trailer brake. And why can't we talk to restraint right here? Again, we have two connectors. ABS is fine. <clears throat> and PCM is right there. And where's our parking aid? You see parking aid on here? You would skip past the before it was on the right hand side. Uh, there's on the previous on the diagram. First page. Previous diagram, yep. Yeah. Okay, on the so right hand side. Remember you saying parking, pa parking aid module aid. and steering column control module. Okay, right, right. So we're gonna browse the diagrams and kind of make a game plan of what we want to test. So we got the laptop out and opened up some OE wiring diagrams. Why OE? Well, as Keith pointed out. For, especially for network layout, you cannot be OE diagrams. The redrawn ones 
it, you just don't get that layout so you, the thought process gets a little messy when you're trying to see you know but if we have a break in the wire you would expect everything after the break not to talk well is that the case so following the OE diagrams we have our high speed can comes out here this is the data link connector and we have two trees here's the instrument cluster instrument cluster is good so moving on to the next page this is the AB tree steering column fine parking aid module does not talk restraints control module does not talk and then on the next page here C and D we have ABS and PCM which do talk that is absolutely key this is diesel stuff don't pay attention to that so at the end of the tree we have modules that talk however in the middle of the tree we have modules that do not talk so what are the chances of the tree being cut somewhere having a bad connector and disabling everything after that point not the case here so that's very very important just by looking at the diagram the OE diagram we can say you know that observation um, let's look at the EF tree we have telematics module crew chief don't, don't have that here's our trailer brake control module we do have that that is not talking so the EF tree that's the only module that we have on this truck I think Keith oh no no there's the BCM we have that so that's and he talks yep yeah, he talks so it's at least good up to here good to there and transfer case you know nothing wrong with that and then we have our medium speed can so in this case we can't instantly say hey there might be a break here because that would not make sense in terms of the layout what else can affect you know one thing the problem we're looking for one problem here that affects three modules so Keith if it's not an actual network wiring problem what what else could affect three modules at once that are supposedly not really related powers and grounds that's it that's pretty much what you're down to at that point right okay or or in in cases like this where here we are in a newer vehicle a module that provides powers and grounds right so generally speaking providing power hmm. so you know okay we may be hunting down something that's that you know we don't want to overlook just look at a fuse Remember that when you're looking at wiring diagrams for things like this, mm -hmm. a fuse may be part of a module, intelligent power distribution module, smart junction boxes, things like that. So we look at those as a whole, even though it's just one fuse, right? We Sometimes we think about, you know, well, you know, it's a different fused circuit. We got to think that it's a module that's uh, sending out the power on these fused okay. circuits. So that's what we're going to look for. We're going to look for something that's going to be powers and grounds because communication wise, it, we're dropping out something that's in the middle of the tree mm -hmm. we have things that talk before we have things that talk after if the wire was cut if there was a, a connector unplugged something like that mm -hmm. we would have lost everybody on the end agreed and, agreed. and that's not what we have here okay so next step here is to open more wiring diagrams now specific to those modules that don't talk right and stay warm by the way it's, and we're, we're <laughs> still in the truck this is this is mostly you know what most of the time is spent so hopefully we can narrow this down to where the testing will only take a few minutes. That's that's, that's the, goal. the goal. Yep. So we're gonna pop open some more diagrams specifically to those modules that don't talk and see what they have in common. Now we have six windows of all data open. Here is our restraints control module. Just one power feed. F33 10 amp in the BCM. So remember that number. Next one is parking aid. Just one power. F35 5 amp in the BCM. And the third one is the trailer brake control module. Has actually three separate power feeds. F31 in the BCM. F22 in the battery junction box. And F35 
in the BCM. Hey, that f sounds familiar. That's the same fuse as our parking aid. There it is. So now I want to get my test light, go there, start there at least. I like since it. we have a common fuse, Let's see, uh, see if we get a light. All right, so our fuse box is over here by the kick panel. Nice of four to at least give us some numbers. So there's fuse 35, and 33 is two up above that. So counting from the bottom, one, two, three, four, five. Let's check that one. That should be a five amp fuse. Five amp fuse. Okay. So this row, one, two, three, four, five. There's the five amp fuse. And make sure our test light works, so find another fuse. So on the five amp, got no power there, and definitely no power on the other side. So this fuse is not being fed anything. And then two up above that, we see some kind of aftermarket red wire that's spliced in. That's never good. Especially since that's the one for the airbags. <laughs> So this is fuse 33 now. Again, nothing on this side. Nothing on this side. That sucks. And I'm wondering if that splice is on the actual power side. <laughs> I mean, on the uh, you know the feed to the fuse, and if if that's not really fused, that could be bad. So those two fuses are definitely dead. Just want to see if. Anything else on this? Why are all these fuses dead? Okay, now we got some live ones down here. Okay, good. I'm just gonna check some neighboring ones. We got a live one there, live one there. So right now we're suspecting like part of this BCM is not alive because these this row of fuses is basically none of these are active. So at least these five, one, two, three, four, five, those two are good. You know this row. Yeah, yep. Those are fine, those are fine, those are good. So it looks like this third row, these five fuses. Now let's check the ones up top on that same row. Yep, those are still good. So let's focus on these five and see if they're uh, somehow tied together uh, before they get to this BCM or whatever feeds them. They one for? Okay, yes, yeah, so we have the dead row fuses all the way from 33 to 37, I believe, based on the uh, cover. Ooh, strobe light. Hey! No, Those around. Russians in the techno, I tell you. <laughs> 37 to 33. That's the row, okay? So, so, so we individually here, right? So, if you were to sit there and pick any one of them there, so you see, here you have the thirteen, twelve. Those are all hot links on there. So that'll bring yep. you into your power distribution diagram, right? Individually. Ooh. So you can go on to thirteen dash twelve. Let's say, okay. right? That's your first one there, and that'll bring you into your initial diagram. That's going to tell you whatever's going to actually feed that fuse. So in this case here, here's fuse number thirty-five. Mm-hmm. Right, ten amp. Mm-hmm. 35 is 10 amp. Yep. Yes, and okay. 30... So 35 was 10 amp, right? Well, no, 35 was No, 35 five. was a 5 amp fuse. Right. Ah, uh, so you know what this is? We're in the other foot. We're this in is the battery other junction one. Box. That's the battery junction box. Yep. So seems... back one again. Okay. And let's see where we're at there. So scroll it up, 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 up. And do they have. No, they didn't separate them that way. So is there two fuse 35s that they, they show? They shouldn't be. So let's try a different number on there, the 13-13 or... Battery junction box. All battery junction box. So, so this They're not showing it out of the BCM, so they're, they're not right. giving you that feed going in there. So the, the BCM is like a module and it's just a black box mm -hmm. with some fuses stuck on it. Not like this. 
Because this is actually showing you internal wiring. Right, but we may be able to get something like box. that there. If we go back again, mm -hmm. and in here, let's see if they show a battery junction, or a central junction box. Inline fuses, run start accessory relay. No, they do not. Now hopefully they didn't do that silliness over there. You see the 1336? Body control module. Oh, bingo. See how silly they got? Okay. Now, this does play in though, right? So you just told me that these are the ones. 34, 35, 36, 37. Yes. They're fed by? Power distribution, VCM, hot and runner, start. And what's the number of the, you see that? J136. Okay, so we're going to want to go back over to 13.6 now, right? So that way we can see what actually feeds everything in there. Let's see, maybe there's a fuse in the battery junction box that feeds right. everything on the inside. I like it. So where does right. that come from? Now we're worried right. about this. so we're going to follow J on 13.6. Okay. So we'll go back again. See, when we actually use their diagrams, they're not that bad. You just have mm -hmm. to kind of... Fluts yeah, this, this is actually bit. pretty pretty helpful. So we're looking for thirteen six yep. somewhere like and it's going to be randomly link. in there. Yes, yeah, so there we go. Thirteen six. Yep. And look for our J output. Where's our J? Right there. There it is. Power distribution F fifty six twenty amp. And that's under the hood. Okay, let's go there now live. Bum bum bum. <laughs> All right, under the hood, here's our fuse box. And we got some wires, and where those go. Wait, is this like household wiring? <laughs> it looks like some kind of household marine wiring, I don't know. All right, 46. Getting, was it 46? Um, What's that? 56, I'm sorry. It's over here. Yeah. Fifty six. Yeah, you got it wrong. <laughs> All right, so let's orient ourselves. Are we looking at this upside down or right side up? So we got our maxi fuses down here. Yep. And fifty six is going to be the last ten amp. Am I, am I reading this right, Keith? It appears. Um. We got we got our five relays. Yeah. Okay. Fifty-six. I think. <laughs> right there, the twenty amp. The one that looks different. <laughs> Are you sure something? One side's lit. The other side's definitely not lit. Are you sure it's that one? Yeah. One <laughs> show. These are 56 right there. All right, so, excellent. We got a blown fuse. Now what? Pulsar? Just in case, because we don't, want, we don't like wasting resources. I'll go get it for you. All right. Pulsar, plugged in, set on 20 amps, but we have no current on that fuse. I'll put it in reverse. See, rear parking Ooh. gate shows on. Yes, that came back. That's good. So if you put it in park, does it show you all the messages that it used to show? Let's see. You just, Will okay, it tire pressure, the, uh... that's fine. Okay. Wrench. The wrench okay, is still there. Okay, that's fine, yep. Here's my... That's it. I'm going to hit my trailer brake right now. I'm turning on. Trailer's trailer disconnected. disconnected. So Perfect. it knows trailer brake so, is talking. So right? let's do the full scan again. All right. See what's talking. See what's not talking. Let's go back out of that. Alex out. And we can actually. We want to just go right into the. Let's go right into the modules. Because watch what we can do. We can select just the modules that we want to talk to. So that way we can actually. We already know what ones didn't talk okay, earlier. So, so select the. Right. So trailer brake control module was one. Yeah. Our airbag. Airbag is there. Thank you. And then the parking aid. Third was last parking aid. There's our three. So you can select online. Okay, multiple you can pick modules. Three modules. I like to that. Sit there and do all at once. Neat. And just let it sit there and do the scan. So it's much that's quicker. Like, just that's boom, what boom. I like too. See that high speed can. It knows. I like it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no DTCs. No DTCs. No DTCs. 
They're all back online. Everybody's there. Everyone's there. Now this is the new module that they put in that you they tried to program? They have a new module in there that, I, that yeah, they, uh, they called me in to program. Does it need programming? According to service information, it did show programming for the trailer brake control module, but we can double check that. We, matter of fact, we have our old data laptop out there. Okay. So now, now how, how do you know? I mean, it seems to be working, right? Well, it's, it's online. For it's service information. Everything with me is service information. Okay, so you say I if it needs through, to be programmed, we're going right. to program it. If it says if it says program, then I'm going to program. Gotcha. So we'll come back out here. Let's get, hopefully your mouse will hold up for the, the entirety of all this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <Didn't, laughs> which it didn't. <laughs> so we're going to go in there and again, we'll say, we'll go right into search vehicle information here and just type in trailer brake. Trailer brakes here. Trailer brake control module. Okay. And it will go into our removal and replacement. Yep. And all I care about is that last couple of lines where it says remove okay. instrument panel, okay. dash, all that you good stuff and everything. Really remove the trailer brake module to install, reverse the removal procedure. It says nothing huh. in there about program. So this one's plug and play. That's it. There's okay. Nothing there for it. So are you going to charge it for the programming? No. <laughs> no, no, I won't charge him for the programming. I'll charge him for the diagnosis on this. Yes. Um, they'll get the $50 service call that they initially called me out for, plus the time that we just spent right now. Okay, okay, so, fair. Yeah. And now, now I just have to ask Keith, what about those people who said, what, you're charging all this money for a blown fuse? Why don't right. you just check the fuses? Well, because there's 56 at least out here that we know of. There's another 50 on the inside there. So if you want to spend the time checking the 100 fuses and not go through the wiring diagrams and get an understanding of the car and what you're dealing with, you're better man than me because I can't sit there and see myself out there and poking around at 100 different fuses while the boss is over there saying, so what do we got? What do we got? Well, it might be a fuse, boss. We understand the system now. We have wiring in front of us. Everything is prepared here. Let's say we pop yep. this on and that fuse blew. I'm ready for it. I don't want to just sit there and find that fuse and then track, backtrack and figure out what systems talk and what systems don't. I want to know if they brought me in here to just trailer brake control module, how would I know the restraints wasn't communicating as well? Right. You know, I don't want to sit there and do things one piece at a time. Let's say I went up there to fuse 35 and it was fed by two fuses out here and we had a bad fuse box. Mm -hmm. How would I know that? I could go across the fuses out here and say, oh, okay, they're good here, or a broken wire, or a broken splice going inside, mm -hmm. no power inside. I could check fuses all day long. I may have no power there, but I still have to go back and search the service information. For me, I start here. This is what I do. It gives me a direction. Yeah. I, I don't waste my time. And again, right now, right, everything looks good. It's, pr it's drawing a tenth what of an amp? Fuse. Right. Well, why is it a fuse? Well, okay, so well, maybe when the modules are active try, or something. Right, there's nothing there right now, so maybe what they think is active is we can put down what we have. Yeah. Parking aid in reverse, maybe. Okay. So it's going to pull a little bit of air. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not going to take very much. Uh -huh. So it, at some point, something might take close to 20 amps when it's surging to right. power something up. But when everything is just powered up and sitting there, it's that fuse is basically... Yeah, it's, it's a trailer brake control module. I didn't do the diagnosis. Oh, yeah. The shop that we're at actually didn't do the diagnosis. The customer. the customer brought it to them and said, these go bad all the time, this is what I need. Uh -huh. Can you change it and program it? Okay, so, right. Yep. And there's almost nothing. Right. So, so maybe when there is a trailer attached, right, Keith? Well, well, there's other power feeds to that thing, though, like beefier. Right. Yes, I don't, that one fuse is basically out, and there's like a pin stuck next and we to it. I don't know what that is. You know, so, so it's variable. I would, so, so with us, what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect that yes. and say, don't know what it is. Should, be to the should not be circuit. connected to the airbag circuit. <laughs> exactly. Like, for all we know, whatever that is, that could have shorted out and blew this fuse. Right. Without harming anything there. That's right. And as of right now, everything that we're testing here looks okay. Our modules are awake. They're alive. Yes. Everything there is good. And we do have aftermarket wiring. So, quick checks, parking aid. 
things like that. That's really all we can do at this point right now, mm -hmm. other than going around and flexing harnesses. We don't have to do that when we have a wire that's there and we get to the unknown. Exactly. So, so pull it out, it. make sure everything's good. And we'll start from there. Excellent. So I had another point of why it's kind of pointless to just blindly check fuses with a test light. What about the fuses that are not powered on? You'll just see no light on either side. And how do you know if that fuse is good or bad? What do you right. think, Keith? Was it, was it a circuit that's supposed to be off? Is it small, something that's, right. that's, that's a switch inside that it will not have power there? Headlamps being a prime, prime example of that. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, there's no fuse on those, headlamp, on those headlamp fuses right now. Does it mean that the circuit is good? Yeah, yeah there's, they're not, headlights are not turned on, so on a headlamp fuse, you'll see no power, Nothing, no power. No power, no power. But and how many other components are like that, though? They get turned on mm -hmm. and go through the fuse only after that circuit has been turned on. Right. And if you know one thing doesn't work, why would you check 200 fuses? Right, exactly. <laughs> That's my question, too. Exactly. <laughs> so we'll pull that aftermarket wire out, and this truck should be fixed. See that nice red wire? I, my money is that's what caused the whole issue. Oh yeah. Oh look. No doubt. Ivan. Yes. It's right there. That's where it goes to. That's it. And it's exposed. It's just hanging around. Yeah, it was up here, just laying there. Oh, well, it's probably touching one of those screws or something. Yeah, like this. That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, they taped it off so we wouldn't touch anything. I guess that didn't work too well, huh? So it's friggin', it's a tap, but it's kind of oh. it kind of melted its way on there. Oh yeah, look. So that was a pretty hard short, but that fuse is still good because that leg was fed by the bigger fuse, right? Yeah. So the current didn't go through yeah, that fuse. This side over here is just kind of Okay, let me, let, me, let me get a 10 I'm just going to end up snapping the inside of the fuse by yeah, pulling yeah, it. Yeah, we need, we need another, another fuse. We're going to charge them for fuses. Yeah, it works. So this thing should never be in a fuse box. We're not going to put that fuse back in. we got another 10 amp replacement. We'll pop the 20 amp in and make sure all the modules talk, clear all the codes, do all the good stuff. Let's see, where does this one go again? Right in here, I believe. Perfect. There it is. 